Welcome to Handheld Gaming Reviews. Today we're going to talk about big things that come in small packages. I mean, I honestly didn't think this little thing would satisfy me so much. Phrasing. We are of course looking at the Mayo A30. So, why does this thing get me so hot and bothered? Well, Wi-Fi comes as a standard. And I know what you're thinking, these days toasters come with Wi-Fi, so what's the big deal? Well, after my experience with the R36S, I've come to realise that we can't just take that for granted. Also, I was concerned that with this thing being so small, I wouldn't want to play with it as much. Ooh, that's two phrasing violations. But despite its small screen size, retro games on the go look great. And at the 640x480 resolution on the 2.8 inch screen, it gives you an amazing pixel density. Getting into the button feel, well, they feel great, and they are a decent size for this thing's form factor. And I love the fact that the thumbstick, yes, it has a thumbstick, is nice and recessed. Should you be of the pocketeering persuasion, this thing should slide in nice and easy. Third phrasing violation, not really sorry about that either. Having said that, this thing comes with a case, so pocket or no pocket, you're in for a win. So, what I.O. do you get? Well, the thumbstick we already covered, it has a nice D-pad, ABXY buttons, start, select, the full range of shoulder buttons, a home button, volume rockers, a single micro SD slot, and a USB-C slot. And while this thing doesn't come with a 3.5mm audio jack, it does come with a USB-C to 3.5mm adapter. Unfortunately, at least for the headphones I have, USB-C headphones won't work if you want to do away with that adapter. The battery life is okay for the form factor of this device. I mean, you'll get a solid few hours out of it. It does charge pretty quick, so if you've got a power bank on you or access to USB ports, that might help you out. Now, I ordered mine with no SD card at all, so I can't really speak to the out-of-the-box firmware experience. I opted to load Spruce OS on this thing from the start. From what I understand, Spruce OS is essentially just a reskin version of the firmware that this thing loads stock with, with an easier-to-use interface. The experience has been great. It's simple and really easy to use. It supports sync thing, which I think is a must if you own more than one retro device, and it just makes for a pleasant experience. So performance-wise, despite having half the RAM of the R36S, this thing tackles PS1 games like a charging bull. To be honest, I only bought this device because I had someone's review playing up on the TV and my wife walked past and said, oh, that's cute. So I got it for her. Now, this thing set me back around 50 bones, which is roughly 35 USD. So I honestly did not expect this thing to play anything more than 16-bit titles. To my surprise, it plays PS1 and some Dreamcast titles. And did I mention it comes with a carry case? For the money, if all it played was the Game Boy library, it's still a good value proposition. So who is this thing for? I'd say this thing is for the person who wants to be ready to retro game at short notice. Waiting for your boss to get out of a meeting? Sneak in a quick session. Waiting for a friend to arrive? There you go. With the battery life being understandably shorter than a larger handheld, you're not going to be in for huge gaming sessions. Then again, your hands are likely to cramp up before you're in any danger of running out of battery power anyway. At such a small form factor, even in the carry case, you can just bring this thing along with you in the same way that you carry around your house keys. You'll forget it's there until you need it, then when you do, you'll be so happy you have it on you. So I'd say this thing is a great just-in-case device. Would I recommend this thing? 100%. What I will say though, for the money, there are options with larger screens and larger form factors with better battery life. So consider that. But if you're looking for something that's compact and scratches the opportune moment itch, you'll be happy with the Mayo A30. If you've made it to the end, thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. Coming up, I've got a few more budget retro handhelds to review, as well as an RG 406V on the way and a Retroid Pocket 5 on pre-order. I also have the Ambinic RG28XX in transit. In fact, it might have already arrived by the time I start recording the B-roll for this video. So I'll do a review on that and maybe a bit of a head-to-head -head comparison with the A30. If you like my content, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'll have a lot more on the way. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.